Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everybody on the webinar. Thank you for joining us. Today we're going to be conducting uh, a session which is entitled No System is an Island on System Integration. So uh, we're going to be spending approximately an hour maximum going through uh, various discussions and points, and uh, at the end of the session we will take questions. Just a, a point of reference, if you do have questions during the session, uh, please use the facilities on your screen to, to raise a question. You can raise your hand or type the question into your screen, and we will endeavor to answer the, the questions at the end of the session. If we don't get around to answering your question on this session, we'll certainly be in touch with you to, to get back to you on, on those questions. Okay. So uh, the presenters today, uh, we've got Michael Kugler, who is a Principal Solution Architect uh, of Digital Transformation. So Michael's uh, particular interest is in uh, digital transformation and IoT, looking into the future of, uh, of technology. Uh, he is based in our magic branch in Germany. And then there's myself, I'm David Berlin. I operate out of the UK. I'm an account manager for Magic Software. Uh, between uh, Michael and myself, we both have many years experience in integration in providing different types of solutions for many types of organizations. And that includes the likes of ISVs as well as end users and partners. So we work with all types of organizations. So the, the objectives for today, we're going to be talking about the, uh, the rapid growth of, of integration and, and why that is. And I, I guess on this particular point, this is attributable to the fact that system integration is seen as uh, the key pioneer. It's, it's a, one of the most important factors in the current business trends. The way business and technology is moving, everything revolves around integration. So regardless of how technology does evolve, system integration is always going to remain uh, vitally important to any, any type of organization. We'll also be talking about uh, connecting and automating the data processes across business applications. And those applications, they could be anything from a, uh, a warehouse management system to an ERP, finance, PLM system, any type of system, we'll be talking about how to be able to connect to those systems and set up real integration uh, solutions for those, uh, for those systems. And uh, we're also going to be talking about why system integration doesn't have to be regarded as a complex, lengthy process. Typically, uh, these types of integration projects are, re are considered very lengthy, and of course they can be. And the way to get around that is by a lot of planning and ensuring that you understand what you want to get out of it. And we'll discuss some of those requirements as well during the webinar. So this is uh, focused for ISVs, if you're actually providing a product to customers. But it's also, it's also uh, targeted towards uh, any type of company that is value-added reseller and SI, if you actually, to, to actually enhance the value of the service that you're providing to your customers. And uh, lastly, the corporate end users. If you are a corporate end user and you, you are managing uh, multiple types of systems in your organization, then uh, this will be for your benefit as well. So um, with that, I'm going to pass over to Michael. But again, I, I'll just encourage you to uh, raise any questions at any time, and we'll answer them at the end of the session. Over to you, Michael. OK, thanks, David. I would like to start with a reference to digital transformation, the challenges of a digital transformation, one of the most ubiquitous buzzwords we hear today. And Digital transformation is represented by different areas, as you all know, each of them having the potential to disrupt established business structures. You all know 
artificial intelligence is one of the key technologies we will learn in the future will influence business as well as private life, big data, Internet of Things, Industry 4 and digital ledger technologies and last but not least cloud. It's all about total cost of ownership. This, these are the topics covered up by digital transformation and I would like to come back to this later just to illustrate the impact of system integration in that particular manner. Digital transformation is um, part of different, is, comes into different business domains and here you just see typical business domains like customer relationship management, distribution of data, logistics, personal, people management, finance, production. All these areas are influenced by the forces of digital transformation. But before we go into the system integration process in general, I would like to uh, come up with a, an example, a typical sales process, just to give a, a real world picture of how digital transformation and system integration works together. So we have on the one hand here in my diagram, the level of the level of customers. We have in my example here, five different touch points. And we have now, and this is unique and uh, very new in all times is what we have the social networks and the dynamics of social networks. You may have uh, people uh, connected to other people in social networks, friends of friends, for instance, and someone may uh, share, is sharing a link to a particular web page and this person is now following this link and is opening the web page. There is some interest on his side to consider buying a particular product promoted on that particular website and this is now what we have is that it is not straightforward that he might, may buy this uh, product on on an e-shop. Maybe he goes to a retail shop and is, compares pricing and even not deciding to buy the product. What, what matters is here that we need a, a, a way, an approach from a customer's point of view as well as from a vendor's point of view to cover up all cycles of, of the sales process and also consider the underlying systems who manage the data and the process. Michael, I've got a, 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 yeah. sorry, Michael. I've yeah. got a question on, for you on, on this. Uh, it sounds like uh, this is very uh, process oriented and it, it's quite uh, uh, detailed in terms of the, the process that, that gets followed in, in this type of sales process. But um, I've encountered uh, some customers and organizations where I've had discussions with them about having these systems in place. And one, one customer, for example, they had uh, um, one of these e-business suites in place, but they were looking to change it. And they were asking me whether they should start the integration process before they uh, implement the new e-commerce system or after. Now, they wanted to get integration up and running quite quickly, but of course then they, they knew along the line they were going to change that, that e-commerce application. So what's your view on, um, uh, in terms of that? How would you answer that type of uh, comment or that type of question to, to someone? Well, I think from my point of view and as far as uh, I have experienced it in the past in my projects with customers. I would recommend to to uh, focus on the process, on the business process, and, and uh, think about how can I model the process and can uh, implement the process uh, independent from whatever kind of e-commerce solution I will choose today or in the future, and uh, make sure that I have uh, the appropriate interfaces in place some sort of integration strategy so that it is easy to replace the e-commerce solution later on if, if required. Yeah, that's a great answer and that, that's kind of what I was expecting and it's, I think it highlights the point that um, with integration the important part is knowing the business processes. It's not about 
the technology underlying it, more about uh, how the processes are going to work. I think that's uh, one of the key messages here, I would say. Yes, you got the point. I think what, what matters today, particularly if you uh, take, in, take into account the dynamics of digital transformation, it would not make sense at all to stick with a particular technology. So if you model your processes uh, for, uh, bottom up from, from technology, then you will run, you will run into uh, a situation it will be more and more difficult for you to, to get your processes um, in terms of total cost of ownership up and running and return of interest. So it, be, it is better, as you said, just to focus on process and think about systems and methodologies who really help you to get your processes in place and becoming independent from technology. And also, I would like to go now to the next slide. So what matters is that we have not only just the world of your enterprise, your company, it is also the ever-growing world of social networks. There is some sort of, of dynamics uh, in terms of communication among customers, which uh, leads to situations where it becomes more and more difficult for you to, to predict behavior or decisions and to get this into place, it is very important to think about interfaces. You, you cannot uh, have all technical in, uh, implementations on hand today. There will be new technologies coming up sooner or later. So you have to be well prepared for this situation. And also in terms of your company, so it is not like that you will have just your own company with your de with, company departments and people responsible for particular areas, business becomes more and more perverse, perversive. That means that you have a partner network and these partners, they have their own partners and even your customers may are your partners or vice versa. This is what you really need to be able to address in order to run your business and be fit for the future. I like this uh, this point, Michael, and I think it's something that a lot of organisations uh, would miss when they when they think about integration and moving into the the future with digital transformation. Is so the strategy not only for them internally, but how they're going to interact with their with their partners, how they're going to receive and transmit the information that's needed, and how to make that more meaningful uh, to their to the partners. So I, I like this. Uh, this slide. I think it's very important and something that people need to make a note of because it's, uh, I find that something that gets forgotten in a lot of cases. Yes, that's true because uh, otherwise uh, I think it will not be possible in, in terms of competition to be prepared for what comes up next and if you have a, a two, let's say, a focused company which is just running their own business and not being able to integrate external partners almost instantly, then it will be more and more difficult to to face the challenges of of a future business driven by social networks, for instance. And uh, okay. also, I, what I would like to point out here in this slide is, it's not just about the process, and also that you have that you have a particular relationship between the process on the one hand and systems and data which is stored or, or recalled from, from data, data sources is processed by particular applications. All this needs to be taken into account as well. Yeah, uh, Michael, on, on this, I, I can see this is the, the type of um, process that would be followed when talking to uh, organizations uh, about the integration strategy and how they're going to implement something. Could you explain when you talk about, when you mention the repetition, um, how would you explain, uh, how would you explain that? How would you discuss that? Repetition means that you, not, it's not just about having a linear process that you do a particular step once and then never again. In terms of complexity, and this is really a challenge, how to face complexity with regard to process modeling is that you may have a particular step within the process which is being repeated uh, frequently and another step is maybe once only once a week or once a month and to get this all uh, 
stick together in one picture and make sure that you really have some sort of of, uh, of streamline streamlined process. This is very important to, to be taken into account to understand the complexity of the process and also that you have different actors responsible for particular steps and data. Data ownership is, is uh, uh, very important and in terms of, of permissions for instance that not all people have access to, to uh, all steps comprised by a process. And this is also something, this slide just is a slide helping us to understand the complexity of a process. This is the very purpose of this slide. You can use this slide before you start modeling your integration platform just to get a better understanding of your own processes to, to avoid to run into a situation where you may think it is very cool to have it just done this way and then realize later that the process is too complex and it would be more, more better, more suitable to have a, a, a better breakdown structure and uh, see how this is linked to particular applications. And I would go now to the next slide which is a bit more comprehensive here illustrating the situation. It is all about autom automation on the one hand but also on integration. Thinking about the customer journey and uh, the customer journey as explained in one of my previous slides, you have different steps to be in contact you can come in contact with your customer. One is generate awareness. What what you do by what what are the the tech, technical the technical aspects of of generating awareness? You can use ads. You can write blog posts, banners, newsletters. And when it comes to considerations that someone is a customer is interested in your products, then you may have to provide better more detailed information to approach the customer and then when it comes to acquisition you need all this what we usually know as, as uh, e-commerce and then you have to make sure that the customer is happy with what, what he, uh, she has bought and you have to provide service and so on. And all this is linked to particular application stacks and we had this before you remember the question of how can we model this uh, this structure without being too dependent on particular systems. By doing so, having an integration platform, you just have, for instance, the stack CMS, content management system, but whatever kind of, of content management system you choose, either WordPress or Marketo or Facebook, whatever is, is, is used here, what you would like to have and what would be very possible in terms of, of, uh, of return of invest is just to be able to replace these systems without touching the, the process itself. And Great. I do. I guess, uh, sorry, Michael, I, I, I guess uh, that's the point again about being focused on, on the process and not looking at the underlying technology because you can use. Uh, any of these types of technology and obviously a lot more but uh, I, I think that makes a good point again and it answers what what we've been saying about um, uh, non-dependence on a particular one type of technology it's being able to have the freedom to to choose which is the best technology at the best time and like you said before technology is going to change organizations are going to change applications um, as new technology comes around, but it's important to have that process in place. That's, uh, that's good. Well, yes, you got, the, you got the point. What matters is here to have a strategy, how to approach uh, and get uh, this prepared for, for your integration platform. And uh, this leads me to my next point is uh, thinking about system relationships. We had the process uh, picture and what we see here is just 
a picture with placeholders. With placeholders, you can populate later with dedicated applications. But what matters is not just thinking about an e-commerce solution in terms of that you think it is just Magento you have, for instance, here, or CRM is equivalent to Salesforce. It is better to think about about CRM in general. What do I expect from a CRM application? and What kind of data I need to exchange between CRM and a support system and between CRM and a marketing automation system? So thinking about relationships between systems before choosing the systems themselves is a very good approach to have a reliable and scalable model you can later apply in for for your architect in your architecture in your system architecture and also thinking about interfaces to external to the external world not just thinking about your own systems what kind of systems for instance you have a retailer as your partner what kind of systems is, is the retailer using what kind of systems is my supplier using thinking about this as well be open-minded to other systems, to other worlds, so that you will really be able to cover it up all in one picture. Yeah, actually this, this is how things are, are really changing, where people are trying to gain more, ben more, more benefits or more value out of the application that they're using. So I guess deciding what you need to achieve before you get the technology is, is important. Otherwise, you become a slave to the technology and you only you become uh, limited to what that application can do instead of trying to take a bigger picture view and thinking about what is it, what's the end game, what is it that you want to achieve and by doing that, that approach you can really uh, build the technology around and uh, that's where an integration product can help to, um, to help you realize what, what it is that you're trying to achieve. I think this was a good point you mentioned that uh, it is always um, challenging to just think about e-commerce and then look for an e-commerce solution like Magento and then just do what this Magento solution offers you and not, not thinking about what you really need. And that's why I think it is very important to have it the other way around. First thinking about what are my expectations with regard to an e-commerce solution and not what is Magento offering me. What you, how you said it. I think that's, that's important. The next step could be that you then, once you have your, your architecture in place, designed and uh, tested, then you can think about and uh, select dedicated systems like Magento, for instance, or Zendesk as a support cloud solution, cloud-based support solution, SugarCM, Marketo, and so on. And you, by doing so, then I think it is more easier later to replace a system if needed. Yeah. And right. relationships, relationships, just on on a business level is one point, but get the, these relationships up and running from a technical point of view. I think this is another story. And this story, I would like to. Uh, I would like to go into it now in my next slide here to, to show you the challenges. If you just go the traditional way without having an integration platform, the challenge is that you really have to think about what kind of interfaces, for instance, Magento is offering me, what kind of extensions they have to communicate with other systems. And what you definitely what you definitely need here is someone who is willing and able, who has the skills to understand their APIs. Of course, you can go to the Magento marketplace and they offer predefined extensions you can buy there and install. But even by using these extensions, you, what you, all what you have is just a point-to-point, -point, a one-to-one -one relationship with another system. It will not help you once you have a one-to-n relationship to other systems as well, from Magento to SAP, from Magento to Sugar, from Zen to Magento, from Zen to SAP. All this 
this is what we call or it could become a nightmare of point-to-point -point relationships. Yeah, I'd like to just um, add on on that uh, on that point that when uh, when I talk to to companies, so frequently do I find that this is the type of scenario that organisations are currently in. When I start the conversations initially, that over time organisations have built up different types of systems, and as those systems have grown, they've had to they've been forced into building point-to-point -point relationships between those applications, which becomes a, a maintenance nightmare at, at the end of the day, trying to, to manage all those point-to-point -point systems. But then if one system changes, then uh, all the time and development that's gone into building that point-to-point -point relationship has to be uh, scrapped and started again. So um, I think if we just move to the, the next slide that we've got there. Uh, this is uh, really where an integration platform does does come in. So the essence, uh, the way I see it, of having a, an integration platform, it, it still enables you to have a point-to-point -point relationship with individual applications, but you're getting far more than that. You're getting, um, uh, instead you can rather create business processes where there's a dependence on information from multiple sources, and then particular actions actions can be taken based on that information that's accessed. So it's, um, so it's about building uh, with pre-built connectors, pre-built connections to individual applications and not worrying about underlying technology, and being able to view it in a much broader perspective and becoming a lot more efficient with, uh, uh, with that. Go on to the, um, the next slide. And uh, yeah, so this, Brings me on to an introduction with the uh, Magic XPI, Magic Integration Platform. I think the first thing that stands out is, is obviously the, uh, the circular forms in the middle. Now, they're linked to all the uh, connectors or the adapters, which illustrates the uh, pre built connections that are available with a type of tool like Magic. So, out of the box, you're going to be able to access a whole myriad of different types of technologies and applications without having to worry about how that connectivity is going to be initially built, but also how it's then going to be maintained as these applications move forward and change. Uh, having a pre-built connector, you know that it's going to be kept up to date with the latest versions of the application. It's also going to be certified so that the application vendors recognize that type of connection. So it's not going to compromise anything like uh, support contracts. And you can ensure that your data is going to be kept, um, kept secure within that environment. So, so Magic XPI, it's a, uh, an integration tool, it's a middleware platform, and it, um, it encompasses all these types of applications, but it also allows uh, to bring into things like social networking. As, um, as Michael, as you've mentioned uh, before with the, the social social network, what you can do with a platform like this is you can incorporate feeds, for example, from the social media and then be able to take action on that, which could then trigger off particular actions to take place in one of your marketing tools or in your CRM tool. So it influences, so systems, information from one system influences what happens in another system and it can all be controlled from, uh, from the central platform uh, like Magic. It does go uh, further, so it provides a, a platform to enable things like the data aggregation, which goes into IoT and um, data analysis and those types of topics. So it, it enhances the whole environment and strengthens the, uh, the organization to become a lot more powerful and uh, more efficient in terms of that. What I can say is the way that uh, companies use Magic XPI varies so much where it's, it could be from um, migrating from one database to another all the way through complete business transformation and building business processes throughout the organization. Uh, each company built, uses it in so many different ways. And of course, it's used across so many different types of technology. But essentially, it's a platform that enables you to uh, 
uh, to grow with and then to to build upon, uh, to build application, to build your your integration strategy. That's the idea of uh, of Magic's integration platform. It's a very um, scalable tool, so it's not going to uh, it's going to grow as the company grows and can be deployed. So you can take a, a project that's been developed in one branch, for example, and then deploy that across other branches without having to redevelop. And that, that applies even if the applications are different because you can still use the same business logic that's been designed for, for one particular branch. And of course, if you are a, um, a software vendor providing applications to customers, there's always going to be uh, different customers with different systems and there'll be a need for you to integrate with those types of applications and having a tool uh, like Magic in your arsenal uh, allows that to happen quite seamlessly so that you know that you can be assured that your application will be able to communicate and interact with the data from any of your customers sites as well. Yes, thank you, thank you, David. I think that was an excellent uh, explanation of what a Magic XPI as an integration platform offers to customers and integrators. And also, I think important to worth mentioning is to think about that it is not just uh, about the the application logic; it is also about uh, the underlying security architecture so in terms of of cloud solutions i think we we have to consider that uh, it will not be like this that we only have just one cloud environment usually you have uh, multiple cloud environments one for instance for your e-commerce stack another one for your crm stack and then you still have your own systems on premise in your own environment so how to bridge these islands, as the title of this web case is, uh, no system is an island. So, how to bridge, how to build bridges here between these systems in a reliable and secure way? This is also something covered up by Magic as Magic XPI as an integration platform that we do offer secure connections. Or, or connectors are not just working on on logic, on logical or on technical levels. They also provide a secure way to exchange data bit across different environments, either in cloud environments or in on-premise environments. That makes your architecture even more scalable. So that once you, it's not just maybe you have a particular e-commerce provider with a Magento instance and then you for some reason decide to replace the, this e-commerce provider by another one with another Magento instance then it is just a question of of, of uh, setting up the connector to connect this connector to this new environment taking it into account security guidelines and then you can just run the system without changing the business process and your daily business in particular. And when it comes to data mapping, it is not, it's not just a question here to have uh, systems uh, connected to each other. So the challenge is to make sure that data is exchanged in a way that it is really um, useful in terms of, of business. So what you need is here to think about, how, for instance, we have here an example of on one hand, you have multiple CRM systems. You would like to connect to one single instance or SAP. So how to do, do this? What we have here, we have a connector, SAP CRM connector. So you can set up dedicated rules, conditions, and triggers triggers when is data transferred in one direction or in the other direction. The repetition of, of how often is this data transferred, the direction and also permission, who has the permission to transfer this data. All this you can do just with one connector as part of the 
Magic XPI integration platform. Yeah, Michael, I would say that this is um, part of uh, master data management as well. Because when you think of master data management, you don't think of it at a um, at a system level. It's more about a field level. So, for example, you may have um, particular areas in your SAP system that are considered master, but certain other areas may be considered a master in, in your Salesforce system, as an example. So this um, bi-directional transfer of information allows particular areas, fields, to be, um, cons to be treated as the master and only to update certain areas of, uh, of your system. And, of course, it's based on rules and triggers. So it's very uh, process-based uh, integration. I guess another point is that um, on, on the slide, having the um, uh, multiple sources and targets in this particular case, just showing that you could have one particular CRM, but it's regardless of the type of CRM, it could be any type of CRM, but you could have the same types of rules in place to connect to, for example, uh, an SAP system. I think this is a good point you you mentioned, David. That uh, with uh, just having a, a, con a connector in in the background here, you even can have a, a let's call it meta master data management. Usually, you just have your master data in in one uh, single place, but with uh, an integration platform, you can distribute master master data whenever uh, needed. To other from other systems and to other systems, as you said in your example, maybe you have particular data, account data, for instance, you have in your SAP systems, invoices, but you may have billing and shipping addresses you have in your e-commerce or CRM environment. So how to merge this data without so that you have, uh, in terms of shipping and billing address, you may have uh, the CRM system as the leading system. But in terms of invoices and uh, order numbers and order management, the SAP system is the leading system. And this is all covered up by the, by the integration platform, which ensures that we will have these data synchronized um, so, so that there is no, no um, conflict here in terms of, of data management. Yeah, exactly. And uh, what, what's, let me, let me now go to an example. This is just a screenshot of Magic XPI, just to give you an illustration how this looks like when you work with XPI as a developer, as, an archi as a system architect, who, as a consultant, just what you have here is, is a, a, a visual environment is based on Visual Microsoft Visual Studio. So those guys of you who are familiar with Visual Studio think it will not very difficult for them to come into it. It's just a typical uh, integration development environment with uh, the option of, for instance, here what we see is the data mapper. This is now pointing back to the previous slide to show this in action. So you have on the one hand, on the left side, you have a one data source, and on the right side, you have the destination source, and you can define resources in XPI. Resources are databases, files, file systems, uh, web services, whatever. So you can consume and merge different resources in one single environment by using the data mapper. And then you can, by drag and drop, connect data fields with other data fields, with corresponding data fields, and you can define rules and triggers respectively. So this is uh, the way you work with XPI, and you can structure this in multiple projects. You can define templates for uh, reusability, if you have, uh, for instance, a scenario with an SAP database con uh, configured to uh, correspond with, with a, a Salesforce database, and you may use a, a similar, would like to have a similar structure with another CRM system, you just can use this as a template, you can copy paste the project and then con uh, customize it according uh, your, your requirements. 
Yeah, Michael, I think uh, those points all uh, extremely important from points that you mentioned there. I think just showing the real value of uh, of having this type of data mapper, the power behind this type of data mapper. There's something else that um, I've, uh, I've found that has uh, that, that some of our customers and vendors find very um, very relevant in this is that regardless of the the data source and targets that you are accessing in this window, it is consistent throughout throughout all of those types of data sources. So in this particular case, maybe a flat file to XML. If you're connecting a flat file to uh, SAP complex data structures, it's going to look very similar. The look and feel is consistent throughout the tool. And that, uh, that makes it easy for, uh, for people that are being trained on the tool to, to be able to pick it up and start using it, which means that you don't, if you have uh, developers, you may have people that are specialized in one particular application, but they could still then access other applications that they don't have a lot of skills in and be able to, to build and code in. So for example, you could have somebody that doesn't have all those SAP skills picking up a tool like this and being able to build integration flows uh, linking into SAP without having that. So, so I, I, I like that point that it's um, uh, the power of it. And I guess that comes back to from the introduction when we were talking about um, how integration projects can be considered as lengthy, time consuming, expensive. Well, I think just this component shows that it doesn't have to be that way. That's uh, what, what we're referring to in that introduction. Yes, that's true. And I think, as you said, we really have to understand that there is a this is a very powerful tool and you will have um, a maximum of flexibility here in terms of whatever kind of resources you need to integrate. So this system is uh, a system which is, uh, you can customize it and you can scale it in depending on whatever kind of, of business you, you run. And that's what is, that's the point here for me now to come to an example an example success story with a customer who a customer using our XPI integration platform as a a Swiss company and uh, they had this strategy to move to industry 4.0 with digitized production enabled and they decided to go with Magic XPI here as an integration platform. Asa Abloy is a global leader in door opening solutions and uh, the object, object is they had was with moving towards Industry 4.0 with automated and digitized production. Automated and digitized production is one of the key assets of um, competitive uh, manufacturers today, those who are able to implement end-to-end -end automated digitized production cycles, so they can run production lines with a minimum effort compared to the way they did it in the past. And provide new digital drilling machines with necessary data, so they really had new drilling machines, intelligent drilling machines with necessary data, so that they could eliminate manual data entry and develop this solution as quickly as possible. That's why they decided to, int to introduce Magic XPI as an integration platform. The focus here was on connected on, on applications like they had their own ERP system called Infocom. They had a dynamic CRM as a CRM solution and also used as a production information system. And they still had their homegrown lock management system. This is also a very important, a very important point to mention here. Whenever it comes to integrate legacy systems, so it will not be like this uh, usually that you have just only, that you only have cutting edge brand new applications in place in your environment. Usually companies, what they do have is uh, 
10, 20, 30 years old database solutions, middleware solutions, what else. So, but it is not possible just to, let's say, to discontinue these solutions without risking running business. So what, so that's why it is, by introducing an integration platform, you, you build a bridge into the future without destroying your links to the past. This is something very important to keep in mind and even when it comes here to, to uh, process automation. And the results here for SRBI, the, the, the results, they had a fully automated production process in place. They, they were able to reduce number of drilling machines from up to 20 to two and dramatically shorter order to delivery times. This is also a very important point I would like to emphasize. In the future, we will have more and more end-to-end -end production processes. So the customer is, on the one hand, he will define what kind of product he expects, and then it is not just that you offer him pre, uh, predefined uh, uh, products you can buy out of the box. We will have the situation more and more that a customer expects that he can uh, design products by his own. And that's why it is very important to have this end-to-end -end, uh, dig digitized process in place with regard to production lines. And of course, one another result is, is here increased flexibility in range of locking systems offered. So they could offer far more locking systems as, as they used to. And now they can process about 400 orders or 10,000 keys per day, which is, so I, I'm not familiar with the industry of uh, door opening solution, but it, they told us this is really something they can say this is really a success story for them be, being able to to order to offer these processes now that's a really good story michael i think that's a great description of um, of how they've been using magic and how they're benefiting and um, i can say i've got a personal interest in in this one as well uh, i've actually met with the um, uk an arm of Asa Oblo being a, a global enterprise type of company, the way that they've grown and uh, developed themselves, they've got so many disparate systems. And of course, in, in territory and in area to area, systems are very different. So even though we've provided this solution in Switzerland for Asa Oblo, we're looking at a very different type of solution for them in, in the UK and, and beyond in other countries. So we're working with them to, uh, to help them make their business more efficient, and look at ways of saving money. And uh, we're really finding a, a lot of areas where, where they are um, embarking on these types of projects. So, so that's, that's a, it's a really good story. And I'd like to point you just mentioned that uh, we have different uh, conditions in different countries. Uh, I think this is also a, a great opportunity for, for smaller, smaller companies to compete with larger companies because uh, if you have an integration platform, so you are far more flexible to integrate local systems as you are with traditional point-to-point -point, uh, architectures, and uh, you, you you longer you no longer need a complex organization and and investment here to get this up and running because you have all the structure in place and all what you need is just to think about how to integrate uh, different systems in different countries so you can are far more flexible to react and to address local market conditions. This is also a, a great advantage from a business point of view. And ASAP Law is a very good example here how they now they say they can regard themselves as a market leader, as a global leader, and this is not a, a large organization. And this is really, really amazing how they were able to become a global leader here with this strategy. Yeah, and uh, I think also for um, uh, any um, ISVs that are out there and service providers, um, in, in this particular case, we, we worked with um, uh, one, of the, uh, one of our service providers and from, uh, from, from their perspective, Magic has been able to enhance 
the offering that they're providing, and they've been able to uh, to increase the value that they they're providing as well uh, by by working together with Magic and um, and coming along and presenting and providing solutions to to this type of company. So it's um, uh, this was a, a multi multi company effort that's been providing this type of solution. Yes, indeed, it was a really a win to win situation here for all participants and. Uh, it was, I think this is a very good example, even a blueprint for many small, medium enterprises who would like to become global players in their domain, in their business sector. And also for integrators, as you mentioned, very, very good to mention, because uh, integrators, their business is just to understand the business process and the technology which is suitable to get this business process up and running with Magic XPI as an integration platform. You can just collect all your knowledge, you can just compile all your knowledge into just one single source of system without distributing your knowledge into different environments and domains and ecosystems. And this is this points me now to to this slide here, my, my last slide, which in particular for integrators, integrators could be of interest by having Magic XPI as a pivotal, as a central point of, of integration, not just on technical but also on business uh, level. Thinking about the future, David mentioned already, you know, it's not just about integrating traditional ecosystems like ERP, CRM, and uh, CMS and e-commerce, it's, it's all about now to think about the future. What will the future bring? What will be the future challenges in terms of Internet of Things, for instance? We will have a broad, a broad level of, of data being processed, coming from, from, from multiple sources, not just from industrial machines, but also from, from buildings, from healthcare, medical equipment, vehicles, and uh, on construction sites, we have heavy equipment, and all this data is very heterogeneous. It is not easy to just have this data streamlined into one channel. Therefore, you need a, a stack to a stack which helps you to aggregate the da data. And we use here, this is what Magic is now offering. We're offering the, our IoT stack, which is a sophisticated and intelligent aggregation engine, which helps you to structure unstructured data in a way so that this data is now ready for being processed in, in, in to other applications. You can use this, this data, for instance, for prediction in prediction engines to do predictive maintenance, for instance, or you can just uh, store these data in data lakes offered, for instance, by Asia or Microsoft Asia or IBM, Bluemix, and you can use this, this data for field applications, for instance, mobile apps on, on construction sites by using Magic XPA, the, the the other product we offer for developing desktop and mobile applications. And you can, of course, integrate, as we saw before, with other ecosystems like SAP, Oracle, Microsoft, Salesforce, Sugar, and so on. But also, most important, a technology is still in the beginning, distributed ledger technology, also known as blockchain. You may all know Bitcoin. This is the most popular uh, implementation of blockchain today, but uh, do not confuse blockchain with, uh, with, with um, Bitcoin. Bitcoin is just an application. Blockchain is far more, it is a distributed database. You can use it just for, for instance, for supply chain management and for, for automated order systems. So there is a, still a lot of potential here and I'm sure that in the future we will hear far more about blockchains with regard to new business and services. And Magic is already prepared for integrating with blockchain technology. So whenever it comes to a scenario, you think about a blockchain, for instance, to automate your supply chain management, then blockchain 
and magic could be an option here to to consider to get a, this up and running. So this slide just was about to give you an idea of what will us, bring us the future, what will be um, just an, an outlook of of what we will see and that magic is prepared for that. It is already uh, comprising all these interfaces to to worlds like EIoT and blockchain. Well, for my side, that's all so far. Great, yes. thanks, Michael. I um, I know we we are coming close to the end of our time, and there's a, a few questions. So I'm hoping we can uh, get through maybe two of them before we have to to end it. And there is one particular question that I would love to answer. Somebody's uh, asked a question that I, I frequently get, and I, I do. Uh, enjoy answering because I think it's important to know. The question that has been put down is uh, who normally does the integration development? Is it the customer, ISP, Magic? So the answer is that when we when we provide our platform, uh, in terms of the actual implementation and development, what we try and encourage as much as possible is that the customer can get involved in the in the implementation process, we do offer the services as well as the training. So what we would do is we would train the customer uh, to be able to use the software, and when it comes down to um, actually getting to the imp implementation, then typically Magic would do it until at such time the customer is ready to to take over, and uh, we would go through a process of mentoring and guiding and troubleshooting throughout that process. Of course, uh, we've got partners as well that provide implementation services. So the uh, magic can be provided through our partners. And then, of course, for the ISVs that provide this tool, we would ensure that the ISVs get fully trained up to be able to, to use the tool. They would typically have pre-built uh, components and pre-built projects that they would utilize for their uh, project when they do go out and, and run the, the implementations. But of course, Magic is always available. We're located in uh, across um, uh, over 50 countries. So we've got people that can that have got the skills to be able to help and provide services wherever necessary. But the point is that we try and encourage our customers to become self-sufficient. Okay, so I hope that uh, answered that question. Um, there's another question. Uh, Perhaps, Michael, you want to take this one. Um, somebody's asked about legacy systems, saying we have some legacy applications in our environment. How would Magic cater for these types of applications? I think this is a very good point. I mentioned it earlier. And uh, I think very important is that, um, of course, we cannot have co predefined connectors for all legacy systems. What we do have, we ha offer a connector builder and we offer a core API connection environment, which means that whatever kind of legacy system uh, we, we talk about, it will be possible to connect. There is no system we, we cannot connect to. Of course, it takes slightly more effort to, in, to understand if it is really a legacy system. For instance, we had customers in the past who came up with um, with Lotus with older versions of Lotus Notes because Lotus Notes is still very popular in many organizations, and uh, of course it's outdated. There is a newer version available, but many companies prefer to stick with their outdated versions they still have installed for some reason. So it is. Maybe because of there is a lot of business process uh, running there, and it is um, like we all know, never touch a running system. Like the wording is, so it is here also the challenge. So of course we can bypass this by just having think about we can connect by defining a de dedicated resource which points to uh, the underlying structure of Lotus Node, and then we can consume this system easily and integrated it with other systems. Once it is part of the, the magic uh, environment, so you can treat it like any other resources, that it no longer matters where the data comes from. And this is the 
the key difference uh, to a point-to-point -point solution. But without having a magic as an integration system, it, it, the effort is, is, is you have, will have far more effort here to, to maintain the interface, the point-to-point -point interface to Lotus Notes to, to stay with this ex, to stick with this example here. But once you have Lotus Notes integrated as a resource, you just have it uh, available on a more abstract level. And this is what you can do with all other legacy systems as well. Then you have it just as you saw in my, my screenshot. It is just another resource uh, you can use for data mapping with other systems. So it is not like that you really have uh, be, in, be in touch with the system directly. It is just via the, uh, the resource management of XPI. Okay, excellent answer. Thank you, Michael. Yeah. We have the, uh, the, the top of the hour, so we're going to uh, call an end to the session today, but I do want to thank you all for attending, and please do come in again to visit some or more of our sessions. You can visit our website. Uh, come along and visit us as one of our events that we, we hold across uh, multiple countries, or contact us uh, on www.magicsoftplay.com. But uh, thank you all very much for attending today, and that uh, is the end of the session. Okay, thanks a lot and bye-bye. Uh,